Very small said, until 1976, we didn't even have a dictionary edited in Australia. There's a confidence now that the language is accepted. And I think we're a country confident in our language. It's something the Australians are pleased with. I think that's led to a relaxed acceptance and take words from an outside culture and no longer feel threatened by them. Now, this was an excerpt from Matthew Engel's book. And it's something that I vehemently disagree with. I think that in order to keep your own culture and language, you need to be threatened by outside influences because it's ultimately up to the Australian people whether or not they accept those changes. And if they accept those changes, no matter what the premise may be, whether it's to be more open-minded, um, being open-minded lends itself to not defining your cultural and linguistic parameters. British English has done this much better than Australian English. Good day everyone, make Australia British again, David here. Today we'll be talking about the glossary of Australian English and the terms that I deem to be most Australian or acceptable in the country. This will have a bias against Americanisms, so if you disagree with any of these, um, chances are I will go into detail as to why I don't believe they should be said in Australia. Without further ado, let's get started. Now the most obvious one is truck. Now the most obvious one is truck. In American English, it's called a truck. In British English, it's called a lorry. And in Australian English, it is called a truck. Now why does Australia use the American variant? Well, lorry was used up until the 1950s, but it has been declining since then. Whether or not that was due to um, British immigrants at that time, or British authors writing the newspapers. The American gas is petrol in British and Australian English. Never gas. Gas is always in the form of a gas, like the gas for your stove. We never use it to fill up your car. And gas in American English is short for gasoline. This is called a flashlight in American English and a torch in British and Australian English. This is called an elevator in American English, and this is called a lift in British and Australian English. Elevator, however, has entered Australia as an Americanism in recent years. However, lift is what is always referred to or how the item is labelled as. The older generations prefer to say lift. This is called mail in American English and post in British and Australian English. The Australian company called Australia Post makes it clear that the official term in Australia is post. This is called a mailbox in American English. In British English, this is called a post box. And in Australian English, it is called a letterbox. Ever bought something online before? Well, they may ask for your zip code or postcode. Similarly, if you receive post, you might receive it from the mailman or the postman or the postie. If you're in class or in school, or you're just writing down something for a birthday card, you might need an eraser or if you're in the UK and Australia, you'll need a rubber. Usually after people get home from work or school, they will watch the TV or the telly. Telly has been going out of fashion in Australian English in the past 20 years. So next time you refer to the television, please say telly. The slang needs to be kept alive. If you have your umbrella, and you're feeling a bit slangy in Australia and the UK, you might call it a brolly. Lots of people play, when they were younger, played ratchet and clank, where they might use a wrench in the game, but outside of that, it's called 
a spanner. Now, Australians might use, you might hear Australians use wrench, but typically there's a saying that goes, oh, there's a spanner in the works, which means someone is uh, stirring something up or disrupting something. If, if you're wanting uh, some preserved foods, you might have them canned or you might have them tinned. Now I come to think of it, what's on my roof? I don't think it's an antenna, but it's actually an aerial. Aerials are installed by companies like Foxtel and pick up a wider range of channels otherwise unavailable by cable television. In general though, they just pick up television signals. Or if you have some money, you might have a bill or a note. And depending on if you're in the UK in or Australia, you might use dollars instead of pounds. Go see my video on a detailed look at the pound currency that used to exist in Australia. Australians and Americans tend to like using their stoves, whereas the British prefer to use either a cooker or a hob. If your baby won't stop crying, you might put a pacifier or a dummy in their mouth. But they're not the type of thing that you have in a clothing shop but rather that would be a mannequin. In America and Australia, you would say the billboard, or in the UK, you might say hoarding. To do some chores, well, Australians and Americans would need to get their vacuum cleaner. Brits would need to get their Hoover, and Australians, if they're feeling lazy, might say vacuum. So this is the case of where, at least in the UK, where a brand name has taken over the name for the the appliance. So Hoover is a brand name. But this is popularized as the actual word to be used regardless of the brand of vacuum cleaner that's being used. Be careful when you're walking next to the road because you might be walking on a sidewalk or the pavement or the footpath. While you're there, you might want to take your baby carriage or your pram, but if something needs to be fixed or a part of the pram has fallen off, you might want to use scotch tape, cello tape or sticky tape. Be careful when you're washing things though, because would you want to wash them in a faucet or would you want to wash them in a tap? Be careful of how long you leave your meat in the refrigerator, you wouldn't want to not have it in the fridge. If you're wanting to hoist a painting onto the wall, you might want to use an anchor, or you might want to use roll plugs, or if you're feeling really simple, you might use wall plug. Got a cut? You might need a band-aid in America and Australia, but plaster in the UK. Ah, this one's rather annoying. Dollars and bucks is used in America. Pounds is used. Pounds or quid are used in the UK. But however, dollars and bucks are used in Australia. Australia did used to use the pound up until 1966. Feeling cold, you might need your comforter. Or if you're feeling fancy, your duvet. Or if you're just grabbing it on quickly and you don't care what you call it, you'll call it a doona. But just be sure when you're going to buy that, you'll need to grab a shopping cart or you might grab a trolley. But not that type of trolley, but if you wanted to get there, you might take a tram. But just make sure you don't take the subway or the tube, but rather the underground or the metro. Trains aren't powered by an outlet or a socket, but rather a plug. When you're playing games, be careful of using a slingshot 
you don't want to catapult it too far. Otherwise, it might ging someone in the face. These are all nouns, by the way. I've got to, like, uh, make it work in the sentence. So, um, catapult, slingshot uh, are, are both nouns. On to clothing. You might want to grab your pants or your trousers. Or you might not be sure which one's which. So in Australia, trousers is an old word that came from the mid-1600s from Scottish Gaelic as a plural fo form of an older word, trous or trues. The word strides, which is what Australia used to use, is not Australian, but British. It started as a tailoring term to form the movement allowed by a pair of trousers. Strides was adopted as an informal name for trousers in 1889. Pants entered Australian English as an Americanism. It is an abbreviation of pantaloons. So good thing that trousers isn't obsolete in Australian English anymore, but um, once the older generations die out, we won't hear it used anymore. So um, be conscious of whether or not you're calling your pants or your trousers. Aussies, please don't call it your underwear. It's not exactly your pants either, but they are your jocks or your knickers, as pants never refers to undergarments, unlike the UK. Now, time for food and drinks. Never would I have candy or sweets, but I might have lollies. Although some places in Australia do dub their shops as sweet shops, and there was this article that said, Many would like to buy some of those tempting boiled sweets, but they are not for sale. Sweets is, of course, the word here. Never lolly. Candy is used too, but it's used mainly around uh, Halloween by people who want to go trick-or-treating, as it is an American holiday. And yes, I know it originated in Ireland, but I wouldn't have cotton candy. The Brits would have candy floss. Me, personally, I like my fairy floss. It is strange to me that Britain uses the word candy in candy floss when Australians associate the word candy with Americanisms. But where it came from was um, William Morrison and John C. Watton presented the electric candy machine in 1897 and introduced the cotton candy maker and sugar and sugary treat to the world at the 1904 World's Fairy Fair as fairy floss. Somehow, the name morphed into cotton candy in the US, while the UK held on to the fairy notion and chose candy floss instead. Australia is most honest to the name, dubbing it fairy floss. But the same goes, I wouldn't have candy apples, I'd have toffee apples. I used to have these when I used to go to Sovereign Hill, which is um, somewhere uh, in Ballarat, uh, where it's kind of like a museum or a road, a hill, where you can see all these uh, different... It, the gold diggers used to live um, in Ballarat because that was one of the main places for the Australians used to go panning for gold, and um, that provided Australia's economic boom back in the 1850s. Australia and America would use sprinkles, the UK would use hundreds and thousands. Australia, we use hundreds and thousands as well. Hundreds and thousands are used on the famous Australian dish, fairy bread. It's not jelly, but it's jam. It's not jello, but it would be jelly. Jello is a branded name that originates in the US. Australia and Britain have their own manufacturers of jello, of jelly. But that sour tasting substance, I wouldn't call it Pop Rocks, but I'd call it Shirt, i call it Shirt. But an American would call Shirt, I would call Sorbet. Cupcakes, I wouldn't call it Cupcakes. The Brits would call it Fairy Cakes, but Australians would call it Patty Cakes. Fairy Cakes and Patty Cakes were both um, used in Australian speech back in the day. But now Australians have opt uh, opt opted to use the American variant, which is cupcake, unfortunately. No patty cake comes from the nursery rhyme that school children still sing in school. That's the only time I suggest 
that the new generation would use, the old uh, version of patty cake, Australian version of patty, of cupcake, fit patty cake. Now, something is that is confusing to lots of people is that frosting and icing are generally the same thing, but mostly Australians and British people call it icing. But you'd never put that on cookies, but you might put it between biscuits. Cookies only refer to um, like chocolate chip cookies in the UK and Australia. Uh, here's one of my favourite uh, brands of biscuits and this one is called Arnott's, Arnott's Biscuits. Uh, really nostalgic having these. But um, if I was buying something pre-made, I would be using uh, a pikelet. But I might be getting pancake mix. So pikelets are usually, they're pre-packaged. Typically um, they're thicker than pancakes. Um, so pancakes aren't a definite Americanism, but um, pancakes likely entered their way through into Australian English through the term uh, pancake mix, because it's thinner, better. But if I was making bread, I wouldn't want to be using all-purpose flour, but I'd prefer to use plain flour. If it's plain, then that make, means it can be used for all purposes, right? <laughs> but never cornstarch, but I'd use corn flour. Thin cream doesn't sound right to me. I'd use thickened cream. Or sometimes whipped cream. I wouldn't want to use super fine sugar. I'd want to use caster sugar. If I was cleaning up, I wouldn't be using a kitchen towel. I'd be using a tea towel. Aussies and Brits like their tea more than Americans do. Fancy a cuppa. I don't really eat chopped meat all that often, but I wouldn't cut a tenderloin, but a fillet. If I was garnishing that, I wouldn't be using a bell pepper or a pepper, but I'd be using capsicum, the original scientific name for what the UK and America call uh, pepper and bell pepper, respectively. Nor would I use snow peas or manga tout, ma manga tout. I'd be using just simple peas. Manga tout is a French word for eat all. French vocabulary is more common in British English. Australia just wanted to keep it simple, I guess. But never would I eat lima beans. I'd eat broad beans. I'm not Spanish, I wouldn't call it cilantro, but I'd call it coriander. I like my onions, so why would I want to call it a scallion, but rather a spring onion? And if I was, you know, receiving all of this from a fast food place, I would probably receive it from, in the form of, not takeout, but takeaway. Something I used to eat when I was a child was not fish sticks, but fish fingers. But if I were going to Macca's, I wouldn't want, I mean, I would want fries, but I wouldn't want to say that. I'd want to call it chips. I was just buying something from a shop, um, I would call them either crisps or chips. So chips is used mainly in speech. Generally it's a mixture of both chips to mean crisps. Chips to mean crisps is likely an Americanism. There are some Australian companies like the Good Chip Company that have crisps written on top of their, like, uh, that's that's what they label their, their chips as. Um, but potato comes in many forms, as we know, either baked potato, if you're simple, or a jacket potato. Jacket potato, although in Australia, has gone out of fashion among newer generations. My paternal grandmother used to say jacket potato but I'd never have a but you might have jacket potato with not ground beef but minced meat in summer I wouldn't have a popsicle an ice lolly but I'd have an icy pole um this is just simply a case of adopting brand names oh, but if I was having something like a scone 
I certainly wouldn't call it a biscuit. But what I like to have with my dinner is a zucchini. In New Zealand, you would also call that a courgette, like the UK. In Australia, we don't have eggplant, but New Zealand have aubergine, like the UK. As the, the reason is, is because New Zealand had more exposure to British English words. In the olden days, there were only two channels, uh, Channel 1 and Channel 2, which usually featured um, BBC programs from Britain. If I was watching telly, I might have it with, not with soda, rather fizzy drinks. Dundries is mainly used by Im British immigrants in Australia. There are some records of it being used though in the Trove um, newspaper and Gazette archive. People typically wear between showering and getting into their pyjamas they use either a bathrobe or a dressing gown. Bathrobe isn't really used unless you live in a city. A wider array of vocabulary is borrowed from the Americans in Australia's capital cities. I wouldn't know what an undershirt or a vest is, but I might know what a singlet is. In Australia, it doesn't rain very much, but if it does, we wouldn't grab our galoshes or our wellies, but we'd grab our Gumboots. Generally, Australian, some Australians say sneakers, but it's an Americanism. But trainers are people, and what we put on our feet are runners. Babies don't wear diapers, but in Australia and the UK, they wear nappies. And in Australia, they would wear Huggies nappies, which is a brand. UK and Australia, men don't have fannies. Women have fannies. So they would use, in America, men and women both have fannies. So they would both use fanny packs. But in Australia and America, men and women both have bums. So they'd use bum bags. <laughs> but just be careful when you're going into the ocean, you would be wearing, you would be wearing a bathing suit, America. In the UK, you might be wearing a swimming costume or a cosy. In Australia, we also use the term cosy, but that's more used in New South Wales. And in general, we use the term bathers universally. People in Queensland might call it their togs. A cosy generally is, sorry. In Australia, we wear, and the UK, we wear bowler hats, not derbies. So the American derby is used for a horse racing event. For example, the Victorian derby which is held on the 4th of December every year in Melbourne. But all of these things, all of these clothing that we do use, we will put it in a wardrobe, not a closet. Oh, and one more thing, if you have, we don't have swim trunks in Australia, or swimming shorts or dookers if you're in Scotland, but no, we have board shorts or boardies. In, a, in America, you might have a swim shirt. In the UK, you might have a rash guard. But in Australia, you'd have a rash vest or a rashie. If you needed to join any of these garments together, you might need, you wouldn't need a zipper, but you need a zip. Not for things such as, are they cuffs? No, they're turnips. I haven't really heard a term for these in Australia though. But your rolled sleeves in the States would be your cuffs in Australia and Great Britain. I have my own cuff links, um, which are kind of like these pins that uh, hold the, the end of your sleeve together, kind of like a, like a button on most business shirts. It was a gift from my grandmother. But in order to connect my trousers to the rest of my body, I might need suspenders or braces or both. Never would we ever use a sweater, but in the UK you might use a woolly 
but in Australia and the UK, they're both referred to as jumpers. Now why do America and the UK use the term flip-flops when they're quite obviously thongs? Well, America and the UK both use the term thongs. It changed in the 70s and 80s to be known as flip-flops because of the bikini that became more popular in fashion at the time. Australia was left behind in these changes. You wouldn't be driving on the motorway, but instead you'd be driving on the highway, which some of them, especially the one that uh, is across the entire country, is called the M1, which stands for motorway. So it's very curious how, why Australia has decided to call these you know, the national highway, a motorway. And there are so many different other M, M, um, labelled roads as well. However, in New South Wales, some new roads, according to Keller Richards, are being referred to as motorways. So it's catching on. In Australia, I would never go to McDonald's, well I would, but I wouldn't call it Mackies, but I call it Maccas, which are just slang terms. But if I was feeling bored, I might go to the movie theater. Oh wait, no, that would be the cinema or the movies. But certainly a thrift store isn't the place to be if you want to shop cheaply. Neither would a charity shop, but an op shop. The term op shop was invented in Australia in the 1920s by a former Melbourne showgirl, Lady Mill Tallis. She wanted to give the thrift shop a more dignified name, so she coined the term opportunity shop or op shop into the Australian Broadcasting, Broadcasting Corporation. But if you want to buy clothes, but instead medicine, you would have to go to the drugstore. Not in Australia though. You would go to the chemist or the pharmacy. It takes a while to find a car park, but even further away if you wanted to go to a parking lot, but very easy to find a car park in Australia and the UK. I don't rest in a restroom. I go to the toilet or the bathroom. I remember my grade three teacher using the term toilet in the in the context of it being a place where you go to um you know girls toilets boys toilets that was something that was very common to hear for me in primary school so the fact that we're now calling them bathrooms even though there's not a bath in there is a bit of a curious and unnecessary change i suppose people just like being more indirect these days they don't like to say they're going to the toilet because you know they're passing waste somehow and that's awfully embarrassing but Colloquially, I might go to the intersection. Sometimes I'd go to the crossroad. Or I might go through both. Colloquially, Australians use intersection, but when I was reading my driving manual when I was learning how to drive, uh, it was labelled as crossroad, was used in place of intersection. Also, in rural parts of the country, You'll often see crossroad junction on a sign to denote the type of road ahead. So it's not completely out of usage yet. If I was driving, I wouldn't want to drive on an overpass, but rather a flyover. When I'm driving along the main street, wait, I wouldn't be because I'm in Australia and I would either be driving on the high street or the main road or the main drag. Never would I wear a shoulder bag. But if I was a woman, I might wear a handbag. Never would I play tic-tac-toe. I would much rather prefer to play noughts and crosses. I don't need an allowance to do that. But to buy a board game, I might need pocket money. I often like going to Melbourne, but I go on there in on a railway, not on a railroad. If I wanted to drive somewhere quicker, I wouldn't go on a beltway, 
but I go on a ring road. Traffic can get congested, but at a certain point when driving, I wouldn't call it a traffic circle, but us Brits and Australians would say roundabout. Australians, interestingly though, don't go roundabout, but they don't want to go on a merry-go-round either. They go on a carousel. Store is used infrequently in uh, Australian English. Store more refers to something that is part of a chain or a franchise. Uh, a shop is more used towards something that is an independent business, for example. But if I was inspecting my car, I wouldn't be looking at my windshield, but I'd be looking at my windscreen. And if something, if and if there was a mess on top of my car, it wouldn't be on the hood, but it would be on the bonnet. And if I forgot something, I'd be looking, I wouldn't be looking in the trunk, but I'd be looking in the boot. If I wanted to move my car quickly or have better control over it, I wouldn't use the transmission, but I'd use, I wouldn't use the gearbox either, but I'd use the gears. Interestingly though, Australia and America would say glove box. The Brits say glove compartment. It's really odd how all the car terms follow their British counterpart in Australian English, except for glove compartment. I love sitting outside and looking at my yard, but I wouldn't necessarily always have a garden. Brits would always have a garden though. If I was in a lift, I wouldn't be at the first floor, but I'd be at the ground floor. But if I was on the highway, it wouldn't be a turnpike, it wouldn't be a toll motorway either, but it'd be highway toll. But if I was going to get there uh, to my desired destination, I wouldn't be going to my vacation house or my holiday home, I'd be going to my holiday house. If I wanted to stop on the way, I would go to, I wouldn't go to a convenience store, or I might go to a milk bar. But milk bars are usually family-run businesses that are dying in Australia. Convenience stores, especially at petrol stations, are taking over. I could also go to the mom and pop store. Maybe not. I would go to family business. But if I needed to get my sheets done, if I needed to wash my sheets or a large amount of clothes, I would go to, I wouldn't go to the laundromat, but I'd go to the laundrette. If I needed to check my car along the, if police were checking my car along the way, they wouldn't see a license plate, but they'd see a number plate. Camper vans or RVs aren't that very common in Australia because we use caravans. But those type of caravans would be called a convoy. Line of cars would also be a convoy. I wouldn't take a minivan with me, but I'd take a camper van. I wouldn't be on the trolley. If I want, if I was in Melbourne, I would take the tram. And if, but I can't take the tram when I'm in the subway or the tube, because we'd call that the underground or the metro. I've been to the grocer before, so, Brits and Aussies like to call it the shop. I wouldn't go to a liquor store. You can buy liquor anywhere, but you wouldn't buy liquor at an off license, but you'd buy at the bottle -o or the bottle shop. But if I was in, I wouldn't be on a divided highway in Australia if I was stuck in traffic on a highway. I would be in a dual, dual carriageway or a divided road. No official term is recognized. Australian roads are still being updated. But if I wanted to stop on, along the way, I wouldn't go to a gas station. I might go to the petrol station with my British friend. Or if I was going by myself, I might call it a service station. Or if I was going there specifically to get petrol, I might call it a petrol station. In Australia, I might have a hickey, but if I was feeling fancy, I'd say a love bite. Maybe I'd make out or I'd snog but I definitely pash or make out. The newer generation are more comfortable with um, Americanisms like make out because they hear it from uh, teenagers of a similar age when they're watching 
uh, American media, probably shows like Riverdale um, really popularized this concept of teen romance. So uh, perhaps they grow up with an aversion to uh, terms that their parents use, especially if they don't hear them among their generation. I really wouldn't want to use the word trash to describe something. I prefer to use the word rubbish. And never would I pour milk from a pitcher but a jug. But perhaps you know, I never wanted to be a lawyer or an attorney, but I prefer to be a solicitor or a barrister. So lawyer is a term for someone in the court of law. Uh, in Australia, this is made up the, of the Queen counsellors that do the research on a given topic that's going to be discussed in the court of law. And then the barrister testifies in a court for either defend the defendant or the victim. Not many people want to be caretakers or janitors, but I know when I was growing up, I know lots of people didn't want to be a patrolman, but they wanted to be a constable. Never would they line up in a line. They would queue in a queue. If I'm booking a round trip, that's what the internet might say, but I book a return. Or would I call someone dude, but mate? Hi and hey, my dad used to say horses eat hay, but I might say good day, or if I was feeling Aussie, I'd say g'day. So it's an abbreviation of a British greeting, usually how Australian English goes. But anyway, I think all of this stuff should put should be put in the garbage can. Oh, oh no, 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 the rubbish bin. The trash can. So I think all this stuff should be put into the garbage can. But when I was in school, we always had principals. Britain, they have headmasters or headmistresses. Now, Australia used to use headmaster and uh, headmistress. Um, for example, Scot Scotch College back in 1992 uh, replaced the term uh, headmaster with principal. So it's a rather archaic saying, but although it's a growing trend in the English language, we can't use gendered language anymore. We can't say someone's an actress. We have to say that male or female, they're an actor, but they're not a steward or a stewardess. They're a flight attendant. My favorite time in school wasn't high school, but rather it was secondary school. I would hate receiving grades, but I prefer to receive marks. I don't go to first, second and third grade. I go to grade one, grade two or grade three, or year seven, year eight or year nine. Elementary or junior school was okay, but I can't really speak on those, I guess, because I went to primary school. Some colleges exist in Australia but we mainly call them universities. Unfortunately in Australia, we don't have bank holidays, we have public holidays. 